Welcome back to Dermatology X. Today we're going to learn about this dermatological condition called porokeratosis in under five minutes today. All you need to know. What is this condition? It's a disorder of keratinization of the skin epidermis. It presents often with one or more atrophic patches and it's surrounded by a characteristic hyperkeratotic ridge-like border, which is known as the cornoid lamella. The colloid lamella is best appreciated under magnification with dermoscopy. However, it is also quite easy to feel, typically, on physical examination. These are what typical porokeratosis lesions look like, as you can see. Here and on the next slide, there's multiple variations for porokeratosis. Generally speaking, they are benign. You may pick these up incidentally on full skin examination or cases may have been biopsied by the primary provider, which demonstrated porokeratosis, and these cases may be referred to you as well. So it's important to know what they look like on clinical examination and under histology as well. So what do we see with porokeratosis under histology? So reflecting the clinical features of these lesions. You also see the cornoid lamella on histology. This manifests as a thick pink column, as you can see here on these images on the right. Thick parakeratotic columns. This overlies underneath it a zone where there is a loss of the granular layer. So focal loss of granular layer. In this zone here, there's also a vertical zone of this keratotic vacuolated cells in the epidermis as well. This column uh, represents the conoid lamella. And in some biopsies where you capture the whole lesion, as you can see here on the top right image, you see the conoid lamella on both sides. So a common quiz question you might get asked is list the types and variants of porokeratosis. There's a very long list, and most of them are predominantly captured here. There's porokeratosis of Mabelli, disseminated superficial actinic porokeratosis, otherwise known as DSAP. Porokeratosis affecting the palms and soles, linear porokeratosis, giant porokeratosis, punctate hyperkeratotic, porokeratosis tichotropica, and rarer forms. Here are these images which capture some of the key features of porokeratosis. In terms of the etiology, it's thought to be involving genetics, so it's autosomal dominant. One of the parents, or both parents, may be affected. UV exposure is important for disseminated superficial actinic porokeratosis, and immunosuppression also plays a role. Generally speaking, these lesions are benign, but there are reports of BCCs and SCCs arising from these lesions. In terms of treatment options, some protection should be emphasized. No treatment and monitoring is an option. And then there's more physical forms of therapies, including cryotherapy, shave excision, curette, dermabrasion, and photodynamic therapy. There's also topical options with anti-cancer creams, such as 5-fluorouracil, 5-fluorouracil cream and imiquimod cream, as well as topical retinoids. Systemic retinoids can be an option, as well as a new treatment using topical combination, statin and cholesterol. There's some promising evidence for this new treatment for, for porokeratosis. In a nutshell, what's the proposed mechanism? Well, it's thought that epidermal cholesterol plays a very important in skin barrier function. In porokeratosis, this has been linked with a number of mutations in the cholesterol synthesis pathway. This results in the end product, which is the cholesterol, not being produced properly. In addition to that, this also results in a buildup of potentially toxic byproducts of the pathway, which affects keratinocyte development and leads to porokeratosis. Therefore, the rationale of this treatment is to replace the end product with cholesterol, but also to inhibit the production of the potentially toxic byproducts by using a compound which inhibits 
a pathway, such as a statin. Thus, combination topical cholesterol and statin. The early data appears to be promising, needs to be more research, but is definitely a potential new option for patients. However, one must watch out for potential myopathy as a theoretical side effect of statins. So that's it. That is a brief overview of porokeratoses. Um, slightly over five minutes, but hopefully you've gained something from this video. We'll see you next time.